years ago, 28-year-old Amber Nicole Thurman, a medical assistant and a single mother to a six-year-old boy, found out she was pregnant. Amber had just secured her own apartment and was thinking about going to nursing school. She made the decision to terminate her pregnancy. A strict abortion ban had recently taken place in her home state of Georgia, which caused Amber to travel to North Carolina for the procedure. Traffic made her miss the appointment, so the clinic gave her medication, what are known as abortion pills. Once back home, Amber experienced profuse bleeding, vomiting, severe pain. She eventually passed out. Her boyfriend called for an ambulance. At the Georgia hospital, Amber's condition deteriorated quickly. In a rare occurrence, it was discovered her body had not expelled all the fetal tissue and an infection was spreading. Official Georgia state medical expert analysis of her case says Amber should have received a life-saving DNC, but doctors waited 20 hours before deciding to take her to surgery. Amber's blood pressure had taken a dive. Her organs had started failing. In the operating room, her heart stopped. On the way to surgery, Amber's last words to her mother were, promise me you'll take care of my son. Amber's mother, Shanette, and older sisters, CJ and Andrika, are here. And they are, they wanted to be here tonight uh, to speak out for the first time. Ms. Shanette, what do you want us to know about Amber's story? Initially, I did not want the public to know my pain. I wanted to go through in silence, but I realized that it was selfish. I want y'all to know Amber was not a statistic. Mm. She was loved by a family, a strong family. And we would have done whatever to get my baby, our baby, the help that she needed. When ProPublica came to my home, I pushed them away. No, no, no. But Kavithia, she kept, she was persistent. She said, it was something that you needed to know. You have to hear me. Women around the world, people around the world need to know that this was preventable. Two years later, after speaking with my daughters, because I lost strength, I lost hope, you're looking at a mother that is broken. Mm -hmm. The worst pain ever that a mother, that a parent could ever feel. Mm -hmm her father and myself and the family, you're looking at it. Well, we appreciate so deeply you being here. And I, we're all watching you hear that tape and those words. We know how re-traumatizing that is and the strength it takes for you to be here to tell your story. And we deeply appreciate it. And I have to ask you, uh, as her sisters, how are you coping and what does knowing that this could have been prevented, um, how, does, how does that sit with you? How do you cope with that on a daily basis? I mean, it's heartbreaking. You know, that was my baby sister. I loved my baby sister, you know. Um, I'm beyond hurt, um, disappointed. I feel guilty. I wish I could have helped her, you know, because she was suffering. Mm -hmm. And we had no idea. We trusted them to take care of her, you know. Mm -hmm. And they just let her die because, because of some stupid abortion ban. They treated her like she was just another number. Mm -hmm. They didn't care for her as if, you know, she was their daughter or their, you know, granddaughter. Yeah. You know, and she's not here. She'll never come back. Yeah. Andrika, what do you want to say? I want to say that it's, it's very disheartening that my sister was allowed to suffer for 20 hours. She suffered. It was nothing that we could do to help her. We trusted the healthcare professionals to do their job and save her, but they failed her. 
Well, I think the most powerful thing that you've said here, Ms. Jeanette, is that your daughter is not a statistic. She had a life. She was loved by her sisters, loved by her family, loved by those who knew her. And she's not just a t statistic. And we are happy to speak her name tonight in, in this room, talking about what this country needs in terms of reproductive rights and freedom. What do you want to say, Madam Vice President? I'm just so sorry. Um, and the courage that you all have shown is extraordinary because also you just learned about how it is that she died. And they just recently learned, yes. How? Yeah. 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 And, um, and Amber's mom shared with me that the word over and over again in her mind is preventable. Yeah. Preventable. That word keeps coming to her. Mm -hmm. And this story is a story that is um, sadly not the only story of what has been happening since these bans have taken place. And, um, you know, so the, just to step back in terms of how we got here, the former president chose three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would overdo the protections of Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. And they did as he intended, and in state after state, including yours, these abortion bans have been passed that criminalize health care providers. In a couple of states, prison for life, Oprah. Prison for life in a couple of states for a doctor or a nurse who provides health care. And so it, it, it seems very apparent even that... When the, even when the mother's life is in danger. But see, here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. So is she on death's door before you actually decide to give her help? Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Is that That's what we're problem. saying? Yeah. That you've got to that, prove you're on death's like, door. Like, literally, a doctor or a nurse has to say, she might die any minute, better give her now care. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, I might go to prison for life in some cases. Mm. Think about what we're doing in terms of saying that Certain people who are in these state houses and then starting with the former president of the United States think they're in a better position than a doctor or a nurse to determine when their patient needs medical care. This literally, and, and Amber's story highlights the fact that among everything that is wrong with these bans and what has happened in terms of the overturning of Wade, Roe v. Wade, it's a health care crisis. It's a health care crisis that affects the patient and the profession. These stories really, I mean, the courage for it, out of pain, for you to tell these stories to help other people is, is just extraordinary. It's, and the idea that these same legislators who would be saying, you know, criminalized health care providers are also saying that after a person's body has been violated, that they have no right to make a decision about what happens to their body next? That's immoral.